Pull that one over. Oh! Oh, folks, welcome back. Where I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And just a couple of news and notes to start off this episode. Again, this, as you can tell by the title, congratulations, Triple H. There's a little bit of a bubbly, 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 bubbly for you. And congratulations for making it 25 years and only being buried a few times in comparison to all the people you have buried. That's a whole other subject. As you can tell by the title of the show, this is my SmackDown review and recap. And again, and it dealt a little bit with Triple H. We'll get into that. But first, a little bonus. Oh, yes! Triple H still does midget wrestling. Oh, and look at that. There's, there's, there's no one in the audience. There's some commentators. There's a referee. Wow, let's, let's see what other cool stuff there is here. Let's see. So, this is going to be a short video. This is like. Oh, yes. A luchador. My god, do they wear skimpy outfits? Oh, the reverse tramp stamp! La Herrera! I can't even say their name right. She's a Reina de Reina? She's a Reina? Oh, she can take it all off. Oh my god. He's only in Triple A. Yeah, I have no idea what they're saying, but. So yeah, let's kind of skip around a little bit. Oh, is that a woman? Is that the Triple A version of Nia Jax? Who is she? Let's get to the main event. Wait, what is the main event? Psycho Clown! Let's see, Mr. Iguana and Dr. Wagner Jr. I guess he's allowed to wear his mask because of coronavirus. That's pretty cool though. Dr. Wagner. The Lucha. Lucha Libre legend. El Legido! Oh, those chops. Vikingo. Como referee para esta confrontación, Raúl Copete Salazar. A punto de comenzar. Let's see. Una nueva... Let's see what's going on. Oh. oh, there's another clown person. Why are there so many clowns? In my... Oh, the referee just shoved him. He's like, no, you have to listen to me. Oh, the headbutt. Lucha Fighter Live. Maybe we'll cover this. I don't know. I wonder how. Not in the past. But... Oh, he would not let him go for the pin. Oh, that's a new way to stop a three count. I like that. I, you you got to appreciate AAA. So. Yep, that's a little bonus section. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, thank you for watching my... Oh, the pile driver! Oh, wait. Yes! You just witnessed it too, folks. Triple A is doing audienceless wrestling shows. Ooh. 
I have to get in on that action. Because you know they don't care about copyright violations. Because half their songs are copyright violated. So I don't know. There might be a change to the schedule soon. I think I heard that they did a show. I don't think there is one tonight. I don't think it's Saturday. I think they're going to be doing shows on Thursday. I might have to add a show to my schedule, I think. Especially if I can live stream it. I'll see what I can do about that, folks. Trust me. Um, all depends on how much it impacts my hoboing and generally what I feel like doing that night, probably. That's okay. You want to look at my text. Again, I also have some shout-outs to give. So not only is there a bonus section of this, which I will have to get ready, by the way, but I have some shout-outs. Rowan, thank you very much. Um, however, I think I've tried those comments. I've tried that stuff before. And it's just a matter of waiting things out. But you, sir, just got in before that 10 count. In fact, you got in when it was a 6 count. Dragon Mark, yes, that's right. Thank you for that insight. Um, I I didn't realize that either. So, and you, sir, are master of the air drums.
No, Low King. This is the second time you've replied to me. That's weird. So you're getting the third one anyway, mainly because, well, you were just third on the list. Um, yep, yeah, I was in Orlando. That was kind of weird. Uh, just to tell you, just to, well, actually, so this, obviously, Nolo's listening to his brief case boombox. Just to relay this story again, because it's one of my favorite stories to tell. When I was kind of driving out of the parking garage of the Amway Center for a raw event, my girlfriend was next to me, and I looked over to my left, and I'm like, hey. And I'm like, huh? I'm like, hey, sweetie, look. Yeah, it looks like AJ Styles. And then the sign up said, oh, performer's entrance. That is AJ Styles. That's AJ Styles. Get my camera. And then he left. And then I'm like, well, well, who's that behind him? And I'm like, why, why do they have this like sparkly robe in their seat and look like Charlotte Flair? That's Charlotte Flair. Yes. So again, that was kind of my story when I met those two. That was kind of funny. Um, and then Massey Massey 1992. You, sir can crawl out of here. Of course, that was for responding for something very dirty I said about Carmella and Dana Brooke. And, yep, so that's everything. So now it's time to get to some smack down Wow, it was, it was an okay show. It was a long ending, but entertaining, though. It starts off with New Day. They start to come out to celebrate the Lucha House Party. Lucha, Lucha, Lucha. And by the way, I just heard from El Vagabundo Dos Hobo Dente Cinco. He actually is driving down to Mexico. He's actually, like, swimming to Mexico to pick up his wrestling mask. So hopefully in four to six weeks. He'll have a new wrestling ma mask instead of wearing a Bravo head, a Bravo bag. I'm sorry, a Bravo bag over his head. Good for him. Uh, so it starts off again. Lucha House Party come out and say, "Hey, we've done a shot." Ms. and Morrison come out. Hey, where's our, where's a our rematch? We've done the screwy ways, and, and then Forgotten Sons comes out. I wish they would be made forgotten in NXT, but oh well. Uh, Forgotten Sons, they just jump everyone except for Miz and Morrison. These are smart people. They leave the arena. Then again, it starts uh, the first of a couple different parts of the Triple H tale. Of course, it tells him as he came to WWE as Hunter Hurst Helmsley, the uh, Connecticut Blue Blood. And it just showed him like beating up a bunch of people. He came out very proper looking. A nice tailed coat. Uh, tight. Kind of uh, pants and wrestling boots. Very prim and proper looking, though. Now he beat people with his old pedigree where he still locks his arms. That's good to see. And then Renee Young. Wait a second. What's Renee Young doing in Florida, John Moxley? What's... Is it, is, ooh, maybe John Moxley's coming back to Florida. Yeah. But with AEW again, there are there is there oh <laughs> news and rumors. Um, AEW is going to begin live taping back here, probably at the Daily Center. I think it's for May sixth, which I think makes sense because Monday's May fourth, May f Tuesday's May fifth. Yeah, May sixth. That makes sense. So who knows? Maybe John Moxley will be here, and maybe they'll open things up. I doubt it, but you never know, though. I know there have been rumors and swirlings about, like, listen, May 1st, after this date, get it together, people. Uh, and so Ray Young was interviewing Miz and Morrison. Interesting. And the first match of the night was Drew Gulak taking on Baron Corbin. It was okay, match. Uh, Corbin starts to beat up on Drew a little bit until he gets tossed out of the ring. 
And then uh, very te uh, very technically, Drew again did that to him. It wasn't just brute force. Drew uses a lot of te wrestling technique. He dropped he uh, dropped missile drop kick Baron Corbin and sent him over the table, which was pretty good. And then Baron Corbin he he does his quick ring slide as he gets back in back into the ring. Uh, Drew tries to counterattack. I'll tell you what. Drew did a roll up, and then Corbin. Corbin's learned. Hey, roll up. I can't lose by roll up. So he learned how to kick out of the roll up somehow. They go back to the outside, and then there was a dragon screw leg whip, leg whip on Baron Corbin. Sent and to the diamond plate steps. They're really mentioning that diamond plate for some reason. Who knows? Um, then Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro come, uh, run out, take out Daniel Bryan uh, because of the destruction caused by Shinsuke Nakamura. Drew Gulak's distracted. Baron Corbin hits the end of days. Picks up the pin, and Baron Corbin is going to be the sole heel, probably, except for maybe Dolph Ziggler because Dolph's really good at selling stuff. To be at the. Corporate ladder in the corporate ladder match. So we'll see how that goes. This match was fun. I ended with it with a beat up of uh, Drew Gulak with a scepter. It was a good match. Uh, the fact that Dan and Brian there's made it seem louder, especially in an empty arena, so it made it seem like someone was cheering for him. This was a good cheeseburger match. There's some news about Rob Gronkowski, who's still a 24-7 champion, but he's going to the NFL. We'll see what happens there. Uh, then we had Sheamus taking on... <laughs> uh, oh, what do they call him? The developmental talent. Oh, I do apologize for yawning so much. I actually woke up before noon today. So I wanted to go to a virtual job here, which sucked. And of course, I, I because this is Triple H, kind of a little bit of the bubble. So I might be a, a little out of it for a little bit. I think we're going to go to bed early. And by early, I mean before 2 in the morning. So uh, Seamus take, take takes, takes on, takes on Daniel Villa. I think he's actually a cousin of Rome, Roman Reigns. Um. Viak gets a gets a couple of forearms, and that just seems to piss off Sheamus, for lack of a better term. Sheamus then follows up with elbows, back elbow, forearms, knees, just big clubbing chops to the chest. Then eventually a bro kick. Sheamus wins, and, and now I'm, I'm bored of this. It's, it's a can of soup. And then it was a Jeff Hardy recap, and it was from the WrestleMania I went to in 2017. I was there. And that was really fun because because I swear I could see myself and my nephew in the crowd. We were on the floor area. My ticket's actually up there somewhere on the wall of wrestling. The door of wrestling. The bathroom door of wrestling. Uh, we were in the floor seating at the very end. Of. At least we didn't have the light shining in, in our eyes, which a lot of people did complain about. So that's always good to see that. Then they do a little thing with D8, uh, Triple H and DX in front of WCW shooting off cannons and saying they're coming here to invade. Then we have The Miz and Morrison. The Miz and John Morrison. Taking on the Lucha Brothers. Or, not Lucha Brothers, I'm sorry. Lucha House Party. Sorry, Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix. Freudian slip. There's a whole other gag I could go into, but that's okay. So it's Miz and Morrison taking on the Lucha House Party. I'll tell you what, Lindsay Dorado flying flippy stuff until he ate a boot. Ouch. From the Miz. Then John Morrison gets in. Um, 
I'll tell you what, Lindsay Dorado is amazing. Um, uh, Lindsay Dorado and Grand Metal League's amazing because Grand Metal League went from the ropes, literally climbed the ropes onto the shoulders of Lindsay Dorado, then did a splash onto John Morrison. John Morrison's used to that stuff because he's wrestled in AAA before. I know his wife, um, Ty Valkyrie, is also used to wrestle in AAA. It'd be interesting if we see her back in AAA. Who knows? I think. The next show will be Triple Mania. It's not until August. So things should be good. Man, I am yawning today. Looks like I laid down during the last segment, but I'll get into that. Uh, let's see here. And Morrison, again, he's just so smooth rain wrestles. He makes it look so easy to do that flippy stuff. I would break my ankle, tear a groin, and, and probably strain a, a PCL ligament or something. I, I, I'd be in like the hospital for weeks if I ever tried to attempt a John Morrison match. Lindsay Dorado, he's no slouch either. I'll tell you what, he does that springboard cut. It looks really good. Uh, Grand Melly again, so flippy. Until he, until he eats a foot from The Miz. And then The Miz puts, I think, Lindsay Dorado into a full Nelson. But then he got rolled up. What? I did not see that happening. I was shocked. Of course, when John Morrison's in the ring, Miz is chanting, fight forever. I do like the fact that the wrestlers are trying to mimic the crowd. I appreciate that fact. Lucha House Party 1? I was shocked. This is a cheeseburger match. Then we reach Sasha Bosch, I mean Sasha Banks. Take, take, taking on Lacey Botch, I mean Lacey Evans. Uh, this was, I, I was surprised. This is actually, for the most part, a decent match. Uh, Lacey comes out on, on a, with a different top on. I, t I tell you what, those bottoms Lacey Evans wears, they're super cheeky. They, they don't hide, they, they, they hide holes and taint, and that's about it. Um, that's, that's all I can say about that. Um... Yeah, you probably haven't heard those those words in combination before either. Like like my infamous words, yeah, somewhat covers the team. <laughs> Never thought you'd ever hear those words in combination before until you watch this sad, depraved show. Uh, the big clothesline by uh, Sasha starts off by driving Lacey's hand into the ring post. Again, that's the right, the right hand by Lacey Evans, so she cannot do that. Again, Sasha Banks is using the classic... Heel delaying tactics. Our uh, Lacey Evans makes her makes her come back in the ring with only huge clotheslines. One, twice, and then Lacey eats a meteora. Uh, Banks she gets gets whapped like face first into the post. Listen, if ever a woman was ever going to do a blade job, this might have been it, because you could hear her hitting the, that post. And just to see a little trickle, she has to get that unsmooth forehead. She has to get a little, little bump and some nick on that forehead of hers. It's too smooth, baby. With the forehead that's smooth as the bottom, baby. It's the bottom smooth like a baby's bottom. But, yeah, if any, ever a chance, should be a little, little juice out of that. Another quick roll up. Then one woman's right, and then Bailey places Sasha's banks on the ropes. Technically, she actually shaves Sasha Banks from, from eating the pin, which is good. But then Bailey's there, she distracts Lacey Evans, and Sasha Banks rolls her up. However, Bailey is still on the ring apron. Bailey puts together off the ring apron. So Sasha Banks got to like a seven count until the, like, like she wouldn't win the, like, the match twice and would have been on the second win but on the third win it wasn't for you but then so with that Bailey cost Sasha Bailey both helped and cost Sasha the victory then another woman's right whap and that was it for Sasha Banks she loses Lacey Evans wins she goes on to a money in the bank match and I'll tell you what then Tamina comes out and just super kicks Bailey. And everyone's in chess like, Bailey did. But this was a fun match. Damn, Lacey's ass. 
she wears the shorts if you have ever watched the movie young blood that the house house mother wears yeah uh this was a fun match this was a oh good cheeseburger match Ooh, then there's a Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman, a little bit of a history between the two. And then we have Alexa Bliss and Nikki Crossing on Carmella and Dana Brooke. And this match was way too short for what these four women should actually accomplish in life. One, I wanted to see Nikki Cross strip again. I want to see Nikki Cross take her vest off. Carmella's halfway there, and Dana Brooke is just Dana Brooke. And Alexa Bliss looks like a high school teenager so with all that being said carmella carmella's ass is amazing carmella also showed up some side boob carmella does not wear a sports bra underneath her folks i have found that out tonight uh then let's just begin the match they just start flying all over it's like since when do you do a spot fest at the very beginning part of the match you're supposed to save that and blow it up i i forgetting the order i just know Let's see here. I'll just make this up, but in some order, Alexa Bliss got flying, got caught by a flying cross body by Carmella. Then Nikki Cross went flying onto Carmella, and then Dana Brooke went flying onto Nikki Cross. Something like that sounds about right. So I can't complain about that too much, and I think my camera just froze up on me again. So this is going to be a funky video today. It doesn't matter because it's almost done. And I still have a pile of editing to do anyway. Then Carmella's clotheslines. Oh, who did she learn those from? It was because it wasn't Corey Graves. I know that much. Uh, then there was like a DDT flapjack combination by Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Uh, I think Carmella ate the loss. This match this is way too short. It's a ham sandwich of a match. And I swear someone said, hey, that's supposed to be the 3D. Yeah, guess what? It wasn't the 3D. It was a flapjack DDT. And then we have, it's time to play the game. I am the game. This is how you take it. Hey, I wish Lemmy was still alive so he could have been here live. That would have made this segment so much more bearable. Uh, Triple H is a tribute part of the show. Triple H, uh, Hunter Hearst Helmsley comes out. Again, uh, Paul Levesque shows up. Uh, then Shawn Michaels, Michael Hickenbottom, HBK comes out. He starts bantering back and forth. And he says, yep, yeah, all your friends were going to be here. But So Triple H says, well, at least Corey and Michael Cole showed up. Which is kind of funny. Triple H is just making fun of himself. He, he doesn't care. He's having a good time. Uh, there's some DX not-so-good memories. Oof. First, it starts off with China. Oh, wow. I can't believe they start off showing a picture of HBK, Triple H, and China together. Oh. And then it was all kind of like the outtakes and the second shots. And then for the next segment, it was all of Triple H's WrestleMania losses. Because I don't think he's ever won. I don't think he's ever won in a WrestleMania. So he's eating the loss. That's weird. I'll have to check my facts again. If you in the out there on YouTube know better, let me know. But I think he's lost every wrestle every WrestleMania match he's been in. Not pay-per-view match, but WrestleMania match. Uh, let's see here. So Steph calls. Says, listen, I've been hearing what Shawn, what Shawn Michaels has been saying. I want you to. And he just hangs up on her. Listen, happy wife, happy life. Never hang up on your wife. Uh, Ric Flair calls. And then I think Sean Walton calls him next. And then they bring up. He brings up probably the most humiliating thing. The, 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 the Katie Vick saga. Oh, wow. They just wanted to, to, to rip him a new one. Uh, Vince shows up. Such good shit. Yeah, fire can't fire. No, that's Ric Flair. But Vince, I'm the man. Uh, I guess Triple H was the original gobbledygooker. 
Never knew that. Uh, he was the person that said the costume. And, and then something about seeing him naked. I don't know. And then he mentions a whole bunch of stuff. He mentions the, well, at least this isn't a, this, at least this isn't a Bailey, this is your life moment. Whoa, Vince. That was a rip and a half because that was the worst segment ever. I think in WWE history, it was like nearly at least like this decade. Wow, that was just a rip. But then Vince said, no, you have to get out of here now. And then as the show ends, like you can like, like Triple H is like, oh, really? But I thought Fox said, no, no, I told you, get the hell out of here. And then Vince leaves and like the lights slowly begin to turn off and it's like, damn, we really do have to get out of here. And then all of a sudden you hear cricket chirp, 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 chirp. And that's how this SmackDown closed. I'll tell you what, it was a funny SmackDown. I think Triple H literally making fun of himself was the highlight of the show for, for whatever reason. Um, overall, I'll tell you what, I was entertained by it. It was a good cheeseburger of a show. Nothing that much can be, nothing at all bad can be said about it. The wrestling was good. The segments in between matches were short. The Triple H segment, yeah, it, it felt a little long, but it, it poked fun at all of Triple H's stuff. So it was okay. So it's Friday. Oh, wow, with no pay-per-views or other wrestling on Saturdays. This is going to be interesting. Wow. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please, and please, I hope you enjoyed my bonus content. I'll see what I can do about figuring out when the next Triple A thing's on, because I guess they're star for content too. Again, be safe out there. Again, help Triple H celebrate because because he's sleeping on the couch tonight. A little bit of the bubble. Bye, everyone.